I've just got a shipment of some new Astro Gear. Ooh, <laughs> nice. I've always been fascinated by space and the endlessness of the universe. I still remember the first time I looked into a telescope and was completely blown away by the moons of Jupiter. So when the whole world went into lockdown, this was the perfect opportunity to get one myself and take my first baby steps into the universe from my London rooftop terrace. This is me taking the next step in my astrophotography. This is a funny little uh, gadget that sits on a telescope uh, and basically has a built-in computer that can do all the things that I have software for. Taking pictures, guiding and controlling uh, a bunch of different hardware and uh, I can connect to it from my iPad and actually control it from inside, which should be really cool. And wow. Uh, this is it, just like that. Same red, beautiful color as my red cat and the other equipment. I, th I think it's been out for, for a few months, um, so it's kind of an innovation, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna try it out as soon as it, I get a cloud-free night. Instruction manual, electricity, USB, blah, 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 connect power cables, connect to Wi-Fi, the box. But it seems very easy. So I've got the ASI Air up and running. I've got it connected to my to my rig. So let's try it. Sure. Connected. Nice. Let's take it outside. Let's see what we can see. So the iPad is wirelessly connected, and I'm just taking my first picture. The chimney's over there, I guess. And it's coming down to my iPad right now. Maybe I should try to go inside, see if I can control it from inside. <laughs> I heard how it took a picture upstairs. That is so cool. So it's about seven in the morning and I've had my first night of astrophotography with the ASI Air Pro. I didn't pull our line too well last night. Um, when I, whenever I took pictures longer than, than 180 seconds, I was kind of causing star trails. <laughs> so uh, yeah, um, I guess lessons for the future don't polar line after two bottles of champagne um, unless you want star trails that is I guess it's amazing how well it works the user interface is really user-friendly I would have to say I, I didn't quite expect that I did have some technical difficulties uh, in the beginning so I think there's a bug in the iOS version of the app. When I connected it uh, to it with my iPad, the control interface in the iPad just kind of locked up. The workaround to the problem was just to connect to the unit with my Android phone, um, and then it, then it just worked. So that's been the only snag so far. Amazing weather tonight. Not very warm, but not a cloud. Not a single cloud anywhere. I had just aimed my camera and all of a sudden these clouds come in and cover up everything. I don't know if you can see. No! Came out of nowhere. Damn it.
So it's nighttime again, and uh, the sun is set, and uh, Venus is shining brightly and clearly in the sky. It seems like I'm going to get at least about five hours worth of imaging tonight, and this time I'm really going to nail the Whirlpool Galaxy. So it's time to polar align. One thing that's actually kind of cool with the ASIR Pro is that instead of using the optical guide scope, you can actually take pictures with the camera and then have the camera um, plate solve that for you. So basically analyze all, uh, all the stars and then get an idea of where you're pointing and tell you that you need to lower the camera, you need to go right or you need to go left or whatever. Um, and that's kind of neat. And that way you can like trial and error, trial and error until you're actually pointed towards the true north. I'm starting to get pretty good at this now. It's actually kind of easy now when you get all the help from the ASI Web Pro as well. Starting to get pretty good at this now. It's actually kind of easy now. Pretty good at this now. Kind of easy now. Pretty good at this now. Okay, just because I said that, it took me uh, 12 minutes to polar align properly, but now I'm pretty spot on. I guess I'm only off by about 20 arc seconds, um, and that's definitely pretty good. Can you see the Big Dipper up there? The Whirlpool Galaxy is right next to it. Right next to the tail of it, if you will, on the right side. So to focus, I'm using a, a really nifty feature of the Red Cat. Basically, if you, if you unscrew the cap, the thing with the cat on, you basically have a batten off mask. To achieve perfect focus, you'd put the batten of mask on the telescope and take a picture of a star. The starlight will then be diffracted in two ways, a cross and a horizontal line. When that horizontal line cuts the X in half, I'm perfectly focused. This is what the picture looks like. Let's see if I can show you. As you can see, it is pretty close, but not exactly. So I'm gonna have to adjust the focus a little bit. So now, pretty much perfect, I'd say. So now it's time to lock the focus wheel. I'm gonna take another focus shot just to make sure that I stayed in focus because sometimes when you touch it, you can sort of mess it up. I just wanna be sure. Nice, still in focus. This, by the way, is one of the stars in um, the Big Dipper. This is the same picture that I took when focusing and this star is called Mizar and Mizar is one of the stars in the Big Dipper so it's the it's the middle one in the tail and what's really kind of cool is that what we see as one star is actually three stars that's kind of neat probably looking at about this section oh there's a satellite too <laughs> uh, nice that's Mizar, and we need to slew about twice as long and a little bit further down. So I've just taken a 180-second uh, long exposure of the area where the galaxy is, and lo and behold, this is the full picture, and right there. It is the Whirlpool Galaxy. And I zoom in and you can clearly see it. Super nice, super nice. There's still a lot of noise here. This is exactly why, why I need to stack. Absolutely beautiful. You can basically see the whole gradient from the city shining up here light pollution. 
Let's get started, shall we? So let's go into auto run. I've set a shooting sequence of 100 light frames, 100 pictures each of 180 uh, seconds. Pretty much ready to go. Auto run sequence started. Exciting. Now we just have to wait five hours and four minutes. So it's gonna be done about 3 a.m. So we've taken 44 pictures so far. So uh, we're almost halfway through. So nice to be able to sit inside and control the telescope. That uh, is quite extraordinary actually. Latest picture. Now I think it's time for me to go to bed. It's about 3, 3.40 in the morning and uh, the sky is still perfectly clear. And I'm just up here to change batteries on the camera and put on the lens cap so I can take my dark frames. Really nice to be able to remote control it for my bed. So we're taking the bias frames now, 33 of them. Very fast shutter speed. And after that, we're gonna do the darks. But now I'll just leave it and go to bed again. Good morning. Now we've taken the darks and the bias and the lights. So now it's only time, so now it's only time to take, so now it's, now, so now only the flats remain. The best way to, to take them actually is to put a t-shirt on top of the camera. Looks a bit weird, but. Uh... So this is kind of a perfect flat. You wanna have kind of a smeared out looking picture, but most importantly, uh, you want your, all uh, well, the frequencies to be somewhere right in between. All right, so we're done with the flats. So we'll put the t-shirt back and the lens cap on, and then we're ready to pack away. Estimated total exposure time, four hours, 59 minutes. Just shy of five hours. It's pretty sweet. Let's do it. This is the Whirlpool Galaxy, some 30 million light years away from home. Notice the beautiful and pronounced spiral arms. They act as star nurseries, sweeping up dust and gas as they turn, compressing the matter and allowing new stars to emerge. It's also been called the question mark galaxy, and that's due to the smaller companion galaxy on the side. NGC 5195 was just passing by a few hundred million years ago when the much heavier Whirlpool galaxy stopped it right in its tracks and pulled it backwards. The close encounters stirred up both galaxies and led to a baby boom of new stars that's still going on even today. It's now slightly behind the Whirlpool galaxy from our perspective, and it looks like it's tugging on one of the arms. In the bright central core, stars are typically older. Still, the core emits just as much light as all the other stars combined in the galaxy. Much of this light is believed to come from insane friction as matter swirls around the galaxy's central supermassive black hole. Some hundred billion stars call this galaxy home. It spans about half the volume of our own Milky Way, but has only got about 10% of the mass. A good night's work.